Hello, Will Perry here. How are you doing? Narcissistic boss. Now, I'd love your, in, uh, your input, your comments, uh, if you've experienced this one. Um, more than just a bit of an arse of a boss. A narcissistic boss. I'll tell you more about that. But how to survive a narcissistic boss. So there's two kinds of people when dealing with a, a narcissistic boss. We've got the narcissistic boss as the uh, the male in this, ca in, in this instance. Uh, the lady there in the uh, purple dress. She, she's, uh, you know, has some trouble with the this this boss. It's a bit difficult, makes her life a bit difficult. But, you know, they, they manage. But the lady in the green there at the end, she's really struggling. She has a terrible time, a traumatic time from dealing with this boss. Why are the two so different? That's what I want to cover in this one. So the narcissistic boss, um, typical example of narcissism, you know, they feel self-important, they lack empathy um, and, 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 and awareness of your emotions or even caring about your emotions. Uh, they have a need for admiration from other people. It's not just that they're self-sufficient, they need that from other people. And they can be uh, very manipulative of other people, especially some people. I'm going to tell you more about that. And it's a bit like they are a boss baby. They're, they're like, they're childlike in many respects. So kind of you need to understand that. And that's tricky when they're your boss. Have you experienced this before? So when you're um, suffering from this, you can feel insecure and it's traumatic. You can feel insecure, in inadequate. You can feel inadequate, like it's it's me. It's it's it must be me because everybody else is alright, but it's it's me. Can you relate to this? Um, you you struggle to assert yourself, to stand up for yourself, to speak out when you need to. When other people are speaking out, they speak out, but you're not able to. Why is that? What's going on? Well, let me tell you. Um, so also, what you do when you're you know when this is a traumatic situation is that you accept the blame. You expect, accept the blame and take responsibility for situations that weren't necessarily your fault. And it's like, why would you do that? Even if you speak to colleagues, you know, why would you do that? Why do you, uh, and it, you get tangled in this web of deceit and trickiness. And of course, the boss, the narcissistic boss, loves to blame others. So in a way, this goes perfectly for them and it goes awfully for you. So what's going on? Well, the boss, the narcissistic boss, has a constant need for validation, right, and attention. So they'll they'll grab that, right, any way they can. And they expect praise and admiration, you know, for what they've done. And, and they'll put their results of their team, you know, and, and, and they progress and, and often succeed because of that, because they're manipulating what their, their success rate and taking it for themselves. And, you know, they, they do all of that behind this kind of scenes and, and they want to look good. Um, and they might become angry or dismissive if they don't get it, you know, um, and, and that can be really difficult. But of course, it's not just to everyone. Otherwise, everybody would say, oh, look, there's a narcissistic boss. Ah, there's one over there, there's one over there. But it doesn't work out like that. And and stay tuned, because I'm going to tell you why. So it can be really, really tough and traumatic if you have low self-esteem, okay? And that's what's at the core of this. If you have low self-esteem, you know you should set boundaries, but you don't. It's so difficult when you have low self-esteem to set boundaries. Uh, you should communicate your needs uh, and your wants clearly. Other people seem to be able to do that, but you can't. Why is that? It's because you have low self-esteem. It's really difficult to do that. You should know that you should be treated by that boss, by any boss, with respect, but you're not. And you kind of accept that. And it's really difficult. And you're not, you, you should know that you're not responsible for their behavior, but you feel responsible because you get tangled into this uh, really difficult situation. And it's so... It's so difficult to deal with. It's so traumatic. It, it, you know, it, it affects every aspect of your life. So you might speak to colleagues about it and say, right, you know, this is what I'm dealing with. This is, you know, the clouds, the clouds above them. And a colleague might say, yeah, but this is when you'll find that you are on your own. And this can be really tricky and really traumatic and add to the trauma. So the, the, the colleague generally, you know, other people, uh, your colleagues, uh, will have uh, levels of healthy self-esteem. And they might, they might say, yeah, the boss is a bit of a dick, but, you know, get over it. You know, you just deal with it. You know, how do they manage to deal with it when for the other person, 
and that's the one with low self-esteem, is traumatic. It affects every aspect of their life. It, you know, they they feel down with it. They take it home. They're stressed. The stress starts to affect their physiology. You know, it's it's a big thing. It's not just a small thing. So what's the difference? Oh, yeah, and the boss there, he's holding up a, a magnifying glass, and he has a special power to be able to suss out who has healthy self-esteem and who has low self-esteem because they hone in on the ones with low self-esteem because they can feed off them. So it's a game of two halves um, because they need to look good and normal and successful to uh, the people who uh, have uh, healthy self-esteem, uh, to the bosses, their bosses, their peers, their, you know, they need to look good and appear normal, even better than normal, actually, you know, really good, you know, successful, to, so aspirational. That's what they want. But they can only show those darker sides to the people who have low self-esteem. And it's a really I put very covert tactic. It's a very covert tactic that only the people with low self-esteem see. Because the other people, they don't see that. You know, they're, that's why I put the dotted line, you know, game of two halves. So on, on, on this side, the purple side, it's um, healthy self-esteem side. Yeah, they're a bit of a dick, but, you know, they're all right. But on the other side, you know, what's going on is that they're the devil incarnate. And it's, it's really difficult to, you know, to understand, to deal with, to, you know, how come other people can't see this? And there's a reason. In conclusion, uh, most people don't understand this difference than the dynamics of going on with narcissism and low self-esteem because they fit so perfectly and it's a covert tactic and it's deliberate and there's there's levels of that consciousness for an assassin you know, um, there could be a, a debate ongoing debate about that but it's a very deliberate tactic to that person you know they find out they hone in on that person with low self-esteem and only the person with low self-esteem will experience this it's a really really tricky thing so um getting help is really difficult getting help is really difficult and that that might seem odd in this day and age but not many people understand the dynamic um so if, if you have healthy self-esteem it can still be a challenging situation but you know you might shrug it off and say well they're a bit of a dick but you know and you work around it you manage to assert yourself you manage to speak your needs you manage to involve another boss you manage to do the things to say look this is a bit of a dick and or this person's a bit of a dick and they're hampering my my you know or you stand up to the boss you know and they they give you what you need and it's like and the other person with low self-esteem has a traumatic time and cannot understand how the other person managed to stand up for their needs and get them delivered and, you know, have a working relationship that's not traumatic. How come they have such a traumatic time, the person with low self-esteem? It's because they have low self-esteem. And it's a really, really difficult dynamic. Uh, and it compounds it for if you have low self-esteem, you know, you think it's you and and the boss compounds that belief. It's a really nasty, difficult situation. And guess what? Uh, bonus, uh, this can be transposed exactly across onto relationships. So if you have a relationship, obviously you don't have multiple partners in a relationship, I hope, but um, like you do in the workplace, but um, as in colleagues, but uh, this, these, this dynamic uh, is exactly the same in relationships. So what do, what do you make of that? So in terms of when you have low self, healthy self-esteem, it's fine. But if you have low self-esteem, you want to change that trauma so that you can, and you do that by growing your self-esteem. So it's no longer a traumatic situation because you can't change the boss. You can't, you know, much as you'd like to. You know, we can't wave a magic wand and, and change the, the narcissist in any situation. That's out of our control. But what is in our control is our own beliefs, our own thought patterns, the way we react to our beliefs. So we can grow our self-esteem and, and, that's what I do. And it is fascinating. And why I do it and why I'm so passionate, because I had to go through and drag myself through that process. And again, there weren't many people that understood this stuff. So do you want to find out whether you have low self-esteem? There's a simple test. I'll put the link in the description. Uh, completely free, completely confidential. I used to have it that um, uh, you had to put your email on. I'd do an automatic follow-up email to, you know, how did you find it? What, what have you discovered? Do you want help? But when I looked at the stats, 70% of people at that point went, oh, not doing that. So it's like, oh, crap. 
Um, so I just took that off. So I don't see it. I, you get an instant react uh, response. You can find out what that means. Uh, it goes on to the next video. Um, and I don't see any of it. I, I don't, there's no cookies following it. It's completely confidential and you get an instant response answer so if you get a score of um, 18 or more you you probably don't need me if it's between 15 and 18 you might just need a, a little bit of work on yourself and you've probably done some already then that will just give you that healthy self-esteem healthy level but if you have 15 or less that, that indicates that you probably have this going on and you could really help yourself by growing your self-esteem uh, and it means that this this conversation is probably directed at you very much. Again, I can't see that. I you know you'd have to get in contact for, with me for no uh, to know. But the first step I take people uh, that have this score of fifteen or, or lower through is is the twelve days to decide. It's just a, a twelve day online. You can access it instantly um, in your own time as well. Uh, program. It's just forty seven pounds, and it's it comes with a guarantee. If you don't get or you don't benefit from it, I'll give you your money back at the end. Once you apply yourself, you have to go through it. You can't just go, ah, you know, because most people, most people buy stuff and don't, you know, don't look at it. It's like, well, what's the point in that? I can help, you know, I want to help, but if you don't, anyway, apply yourself. If you don't like it, great, I'll give you your money back. So there's no risk to you, but I'll give you some of my time for that as well, as well as like some emails, uh, some emails, some videos to really give you the basis of understanding about this stuff, about what goes on in our head, what low self-esteem is, how it's formed and all that sort of thing, how the brain works. But also this document that really takes you through your story and helps you understand what's really going on for you and the, the situation you're dealing with. Uh, and you have one-to-one -one time with me included in that. So it's about giving you real clarity. And that's, that's the best place for them to decide whether, yeah, this is something you want to work on and need to work on or not, you know, it's completely up to you. So uh, thank you very much for your time. If you've made it to the end here, it's like, woo. <laughs> yeah, I hope that's been interesting, you know, I hope it's really interesting. So if it is interesting, please, you know, dive into the comments, give me some thoughts, um, give me some questions. What would you like me to cover for you? But, uh, you know, ask me some questions or if you want to privately message me, message me. Um, but also, if this is has been of interest or benefit to you, please subscribe hit the, the YouTube um, subscribe button because that helps on, you know, everybody asks that these days. Um, but the algorithm, algorithm is a huge step forward for, for the huge step forward for, for the channel, but it doesn't, doesn't cost you anything at all. So if you could just subscribe, hit the like, that would be awesome. Thank you very much. If it's been of benefit to you, uh, many thanks. I hope you're well. Have an awesome rest of the day. All right. Bye-bye.